Over to you, Joe. Lovely. So welcome to everybody for our, uh, our next Tilt webinar on the 11th of April 2020. And uh, it's our absolute pleasure to be uh, introducing Glenn Cake, who's come all the way from Canada. Well, I know he's in Canada at the moment, but he's beaming live to us all the way from Canada. And um, I've known um, Glenn online for quite a few years. I'm not sure if we ever met face to face at ACFL, but... Um, Unfortunately, no. Okay, but we, we've certainly uh, been in contact with each other. I think probably one of the first times would have been the, um, the, in August, um, uh, quite a few years ago now, we took part in the same um, virtual summit, I yes. seem to remember, um, yes, with uh, Rick, uh, Mr. Lubin, I think, if I'm correctly. Anyway. Evan. Evan, Evan Lubin. Evan yeah. Lubin. Evan Lubin, yeah. that's right. Yeah, so, so it's really lovely, Glenn, that you can um, spend a bit of time with us today and talking about interactive activities. I love the, the title, that's edutainment. So without any further ado, I'd like you to introduce yourself and then we'll crack on with some fun on a Saturday night all together with language teachers. That's absolutely brilliant. So all welcome right. to, um, to the Tilt webinar. Okay, thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. And welcome everyone to the session on that's edutainment. I'm gonna try and share my screen now and get started. Right away, is everyone seeing my screen there with a lovely picture of the East Coast of Canada? Mm -hmm. Yes, all right. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, my name is Glenn Cake. I've been a high school distance education teacher in core French in Canada since 2003. So I'm located on the most easterly point in North America, that being St. John's, Newfoundland. And uh, I just chatted with Joe, uh, we were chatting online and I, I said it'd be great to have the opportunity to share some of the things that I do um, with my classes and my students. And I only hope to, uh, to offer up some new insights and some new ideas following the presentations that uh, Tilt and uh, Linguascope has already had. So um, here we go. On the far, <clears throat> the far east, if you will. Uh, I live in St. John's and I'm assuming that most of you today are located uh, somewhere around the UK. So uh, the expression that we use in Newfoundland is across the pond. It's obviously a very, very big pond, uh, which is a body of water. And the actual distance is uh, 3,735 kilometers. All right, so from point to point. So again, a pleasure to be here today. Uh, the UK is no stranger to me. Uh, on the left-hand side, you'll see where I spent the winter of 1988 when I did my teaching internship and we recently had a reunion uh, of teachers that were over there over 30 years ago now. So this is actually the Maltings in Harlow, Essex. So I was there in 88. I'll never forget I left a snowstorm on a cold January night in Newfoundland to arrive to a sunny day in England uh, in 1988 in January. All right, so jumping right on, um, the CDLI, or the Center for Distance Learning and Innovation, um, is a part of the Newfoundland Labrador English School District. And we deliver e-courses, e-learning courses to students attending high schools in remote areas of the province. All right, so I teach via a hybrid model. I use Blackboard Collaborate for video conferencing and real-time interaction. And we use an LMS by the name of uh, Brightspace formerly known as Desire to Learn. So the picture down here is kind of neat. It's a place called Gray River on the south coast of Newfoundland, only accessible by boat. The population there is just over uh, 100 people. In the K-12 school they have there, I think there's a dozen students. <laughs> and they have uh, four teachers there, including the admin, which is composed of two married couples. So this is the type of student that I'm dealing with in remote education. All right, just a little bit more about that, some stats for you to have a quick peek at. And you can see the distance ed is in almost half the schools throughout Newfoundland and Labrador, okay? So it's obviously essential for students located in, in rural areas for, for two reasons, really. One, because it's difficult to attract uh, qualified teachers to go to these small remote communities, or two, there's not enough students to warrant having a full-time French physics math teacher. So the kids go online from that point on. 
Uh, so here's the typical uh, distance ed room on the right hand side. And this is a pretty neat graphic. Once I click, you will see all the sites that we service in Newfoundland and Labrador. So we are a subsidiary of uh, the Newfoundland and Labrador English School District, which is under the Department of Education. So that gives you an idea of all the schools that we're uh, reaching out to, all right? So my students, unfortunately, I don't get to meet many of my students face to face. Occasionally I will if they come to St. John's for a leadership conference or a sporting event. There's a couple pictures there that you can see where I actually get to meet them. But for the most part, uh, we do all of our correspondence online. Uh, we don't use a whole lot of live video like we're doing here today with Zoom, um, but we use a, a lot of digital storytelling techniques, uh, you know, to try and, um, you know, working in the target language to get students to share their experiences and, and share their work. So I use everything from Flipgrid to Adobe Spark. There's all kinds of wonderful programs out there for that. All right, so we're gonna jump in today. How am I doing? The intro is over. So I want uh, just, the analogy I'm gonna to use today is an iceberg. So you may know of many games, the learning-based platforms that you use with your students. Um, so I want to, show you what's underneath the water, which is the nine tenths of the iceberg, all right? So uh, my philosophy is that any type of assignment, project or activity can be emulated in some way, shape or form in the virtual classroom. We're all language teachers, we're all very creative people. We rely on our creativity to make our classes exciting and engaging. So that's the challenge I'm gonna throw forward to you today. Uh, before I jump into the first game, I just wanted to give a shout out to um, Triptico Plus. I don't know if, Joe, is, is that something that you're familiar with? Yes, uh, I've heard of Triptico. I know, I know that it used to be, well, it is a, it's, um, a piece of software that normally people use on whiteboards, but um, he, um, David from yes. Triptico has just introduced an iOS app as well, uh, which exactly. is exciting. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, yeah. So what I love, in my typical French class, when I stare with my high school students, I always start with uh, the wheel. So either I spin the wheel and give them a question to answer, or I spin the wheel, choose one of them, and they complete the sentence. So I'm trying to keep it as interactive and engaging as possible. So I also require that the students, once they've answered, that they then go ahead and ask the next question prompt to the next student. Now, you might be thinking, well, this is a lot to do with a class of 15 or 20. The beauty about Triptico is that you can make smaller groups and, and, and share the Triptico activity and you can uh, make one of the students a, a moderator and then they can kind of run the activity. Mm -hmm. Kids jump on really quick with that. So another activity that I have, I have the red bouncing ball, which isn't bouncing today, but again, I'll just bounce that around to the different students, ask them a question, then they have to ask someone else. So that's uh, an activity I do in the beginning of the class. So I did have an activity I wanted you to try. You did, are we okay? Sorry, no, sorry, that was my fault, sorry. Oh, that's okay, that's okay. <laughs> have I said enough? <laughs> no, no, not at all, sorry. My okay, mistake. so, all right. So um, now this one here, Joe, I have to share this. So if I click on this, you will see um, you're going to see this right here now. So I'm going to actually put this in the chat, if I may, Joe, and just get people to give it a go. Uh, or can I get you to do that, Joe? Because I'm not seeing the chat. Where's my chat? Uh, right, the chat's bottom of the screen. Yeah. Click on chat. You'll be able to copy and paste the link into there. Mm. Um, if when you're actually sharing your screen, it's sometimes difficult to get to the chat. And the way you do it is if you just hover at the top where you've got share screen, then the for me anyway, that's yes. when the icons come down and you can Perfect. select things, More. including right. the chat. Okay. Thanks, Helen. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm gonna send that right there now to you people. And when you um, open up this link, you don't sign into a page or anything like that. You simply go to the bottom of the page and click on open the activity, all right? 
once you do that, and hopefully we're getting thumbs up that that is happening. Again. Working, good. All right, so we won't go through, but just as an example, what I've done in the past with my students is that I've recorded the correct order of this paragraph. So the students are required to listen to what it is that I'm saying, and then they have to put it in the correct order. All right. So I just wanted to give you a little sample of that. Um, and, I, you know, I'll actually go ahead and show you the corrigé. Bonjour, je m'appelle pa Je m'appelle Pascal et j'ai 14 ans. Je suis né en France et j'adore le football. So again, the students, like you're doing, you're moving the blocks back and forth, up and down, right? To put it in the correct order. Really neat activity that I like to do. And then I'll often ask the students to take a screen share of their finished product and send it to me for grading purposes. All right? I just wanted to share that with you. So that's only one of many, many activities that Triptychal offers up, okay? Um, and I've even done this with a song. I've taken a song in French, broken it down, given them the audio or the YouTube link to the song. Uh, of course, if they use closed captionings, they're, <laughs> they're finding ways around it, but um, you get the idea there. All right, and there's tons of activities there. One that I really like is find the answer. So you can make up a set of vocab terms on les pastons et loisirs, for example. The students will get 10 to 15 seconds to look at all, to see where all the pictures are located. And then they're prompted um, to work in teams and to play. And this works really well with application share. Another one that Sue Cave mentioned uh, in a webinar that I recently watched was the blockbuster idea. So I think for this one, I made it up on his adjective. So again, the idea that you're going from left to right if you're green or north to south if you're yellow. Uh, I think the example I had was, si tu dis toujours la vérité, tu es. So they'd have to come up with a word that started with H or whatever letter it is that they picked. All right. Okay, so I just want to give a shout out to that. Now, David, as you know, Joe is fantastic. Don't ask me why, I've, I've been showing Triptychal for a while. Um, typically when you sign up for a, uh, a free account, you get a seven day trial. If you use the promo code Glencake, you will get a three month uh, membership for free. All right, so that's something that you wanna certainly avail of and give a shout out to David for his kindness for doing that. Uh, he's also working on a lesson builder feature allowing teachers to build lessons, presentations, and you can uh, insert triptychal activities on the web. So certainly give that a go. All right, I hope I'm not going too fast here. All right, so obviously I don't need to tell you guys why do we play, why use edutainment activities in your classes? Well, I think it's pretty straightforward and I'm sure that you can come up with some other ideas as to why uh, it can be effective for language learning. All right, so today we're gonna look at the Fab Four. Hope you like my British uh, reference there. <laughs> so all of these equal what it is we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at Kahoot and the premium features that are now available for free until the end of June. Quiz Live on the individual um, mode. Uh, Gimkit, or Jimkit, it is pronounced her G, as you said, Vincent, Gimkit, all right, which is a combination of Kahoot and Quizlet Live. And we're gonna have a quick peek at WordWall. I must say, uh, WordWall, I discovered today, I had an email back from the, the creator. He's also from the UK. So you guys have been doing it right for a long, long time. Love BBC, LingvaScope, WordWall. There's all these tremendous, tremendous uh, sites. Why Kahoot? All right, pretty straightforward there. You're giving immediate feedback. Something I want to tell you is that you can get reports on each and every Kahoot that you give. And in this remote learning world, you might wanna think now of uh, giving Kahoots as a challenge. So today we're gonna work through one together, but I could easily take this Kahoot and send it as a challenge. Um, 
and I could even turn off the timer so we're not focused on uh, you know answering quickly but more so on accuracy all right so the six steps that I'm going to show you today of course we've got the multiple choice which Kahoot has had for a while with your four answers but now they've included something with a video so you can take any YouTube video, it has to be a YouTube video, insert it as a question prompt, and then have your choices based on the video, which I find is really clever. All right, they've also stepped it up that you can use images as choices for answers. This is again in Kahoot Premium. Video plus image choices. There is an open-ended question. All right. Um, so again, you can use video or image and have the students answer that. And the Kahoot puzzle is the one where you have to take the pieces of the puzzle and put them together. All right, so we're gonna look at that as well. All right, just a couple of quick quotes from uh, former students of mine who really, they really enjoyed the online games that we did. I also, by the way, I should have mentioned this earlier, Joe, I have a website uh, which I will share with you at the end so if you want to delve into any of these a bit deeper, you'll certainly be able to do so. All right. That's fantastic. And would you be happy to share your presentation as well, Glenn? Absolutely, everyone? Joe. Absolutely. That's amazing. It's important yeah. to say as well that the premium features we're, look, we're going to be looking at are available for free at the moment during the lockdown as well. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So let's jump right Thank in. You. So now um, everyone can see my screen. You see that I have something created called the Tilt Demo. All right, now remember I, I told you about that challenge feature. We're gonna do a live version of that in a, a virtual classroom. But if I wanted to assign that as a challenge, just to show you, okay, I could go in here, I could choose the date when I want it to be done, what time, the question timer on or off. The tricky part is here that if you wanna use this as a form of assessment piece, where you actually want to give the students a grade, you have to ensure that they put in their correct name in order for you to see, um, you know, exactly um, what, how they did on the given Kahoot, okay? So let's go into the live version. Some of you have the Kahoot app, which is great. Others of you, you can just go to uh, kahoot.it. I'm gonna leave all these things as in the lobby music. So let's just do the classic version. And again, so you go to kahoot.it in a new browser or you log in with the Kahoot app. All right, so. Can I just check that we don't need sound here because I'm not sure that you're sharing your computer sound. Uh, we will. Right, Throughout so it, we it, will, yes. that maybe that you want to unshare now and go back in again. Oh, well, well when you do need the sound, go. Can you hear that now, Helen? I can't know. No, that's where I think probably for you to go. Un I mean, the way the way I know is is to unshare it. And this time, when you go in and share on the left hand side, there's a little box that says "Share Computer Sound." <clears throat> All right. I expect there's a way of doing it even mid mid share, but I don't know of another way of doing it. Yeah. Well, we'll have to, uh, we'll work through that as best we can with the examples we look at today. So I'm gonna give people another 20, 30 seconds. Uh, and something neat that you can do, I don't know if any of you recognize who that is on the screen. Uh, shout out to John Prine, who recently passed the great American singer songwriter. Um, so you can take any YouTube video and put it in as a background as students come in, they're listening to you know, the music, whatever it might be. It might be a video, it could be music, whatever the case. All right. So that's great. I'm going to log, no, I'm not going to log in, but, that, but that's what I would do on my phone, you know, and just putting in the code and the name. Now, Joe, if we were face-to-face, -face, I might have a T-shirt that I could uh, give out as a prize to the top winner. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that's not going to happen while we're waiting for it to all load up, we've got a couple of questions in the chat. Namely, um, is there a way of bulk adding questions into Kahoot as you can with Quizlet and Gimkit? Do you know, Glenn? Um, 
I haven't tried that, Joe, but I do believe if you go into a Google spreadsheet and create your questions, you can import them. I'm not 100% sure though, unfortunately. Okay, cool, thank you. But often the thing that I should mention on that note, Joe, is um, you know, rather than starting from scratch each and every time you wanna create a Kahoot, if you go into the Discover tab, you can search the thousands of Kahoots that are already out there. If you see one that you like, you can copy or make a duplicate of that to your account. And then you can go into that and make the edits that you want. So if there's questions you didn't like, you could remove them or replace them. That's a really cool feature I find with Kahoots. Cool. All right, so I think we're good to go, 45. Let's give it a start here because time is ticking and join at the end, there we go. So here's our demo. So we're gonna start off with a question, a word cloud. So what subject do you teach? Okay, you've only got 20 seconds to do that or 30 seconds, so we'll do it quickly. All right, 10 seconds to go. All right, so up pop the answers. Used to teach French. We have Greek, linguistics, Spanish, and French, and French seems to be the language of the day. Great. So the word cloud feature um, is a premium feature. I, I've got to be honest, I don't know if it can be used or not for sure in, in a Kahoot. When you create one, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to create a word cloud one or not, but I just wanted to share that with you. Polling, you definitely will. So as a virtual class these days, how are you feeling? You would quickly choose one of the four options there. Just again, to give you an idea. I know this has all come upon us rather quickly. All right, so the answer should pop up there now. So we get a general idea, everyone 65% trying to get a handle. Um, we wanna get rid of the people in the, at your wit's end. We wanna get rid of that by the end of the session today with any luck. <laughs> okay, another neat feature with premium is that you can now do a slide or an informational slide. So Kahoot is actually moving into the idea that you would have, you present your content in three or four slides, insert a question or two, add more content, questions. So that's kind of a, a neat thing to do. So that's just a quick quote I had there from uh, Steven Anderson. All right, so now we move into a question. Here is the official mascot of the Quebec Winter Carnival. His name is Bonham Canaval, and he always wears a red what? Oh, oh, 10 seconds left. I, I'm doing a speed version here today, obviously, right? <laughs> I probably should have did this en français. There you go. He wears a red toque. And what I want you to notice in that one, one of the new features with Kahoot, is that you notice how the picture slowly, gradually, you know, showed itself, if you will, it was, it was taken off in group. So that's an image reveal feature, which is kind of cool, because what students have to do now, they have to make sure that they're looking at the prompt before answering. Okay, so that was indeed la tuque. Good. Excellent. Scoreboard and Lady Lavinia is in the lead. Okay, good stuff. Moving right along. Number five. Regarde l'image et complète la phrase. Le chat est. Now, this idea came from Sue Cave's presentation that I watched on the, uh, the phonetics, which was fantastic. She gave a presentation yesterday. Sorry, not yesterday, a couple days ago. So in this case, we're looking at the sounds, we're looking ooh, 
en a i, of course, the answer is going to be le chat est gris. So think about how you might use that, you know, these types of questions um, using your next kahoot. All right, Lady Lavinia still in the lead, moving right along. Another informational slide. No need to answer this time. Uh, Steve Smith has a series of uh, YouTube videos out now, and Steve is phenomenal. Um, he talks about one-way and two-way listening, uh, keeping the input comprehensible to reduce anxiety. All right. So now you're going to watch a video and choose a corresponding sentence. I'm going to try and play this as loud as I can. It may or may not work. Seems pretty simple. Your first line is, my name is Claude. So just repeat after me. Je m'appelle Claude. You're the cook Claude. Je m'appelle Claude. Okay. So for this particular question, I gave a little bit more time because the prompt came from the video there, all right? And the neat new thing about the YouTube uh, video that you can insert is that you can crop it. So you might find something that you really like that's three minutes long, but you don't want it to be three minutes, you want 30 seconds of it. So you can crop that down, okay? Um, also, for face-to-face, -face, I could have shown it in its full, full screen. I'll show you that in a minute. So there's poor old Joey doesn't speak French very well, okay? So I could show the media again, and I could have done this thing, showed the clip in its full screen. So that's something that you want to consider. If you're doing this as a Kahoot challenge, I've learned that you're only allowed to see the video once, which is a little bit, you can't play it a second time, which is unfortunate, but um, the Kahoot is right there with that now. Cat Canton is the highest climber. Good stuff. Okay, moving right along. Okay, we're doubling our points this time. What is today's presenter's last name? Is it Mr. Glenn? Cookie, pie, fudge, or cake? Just a fun question there to give you an idea of uh, how you can use the image choices uh, in your Kahoot activity. And by the way, my last name comes from Northern England, uh, derived from cake bread. Uh, I learned that when I went to uh, Essex that time. So it is Mr. Cake. Yes, exactly. All right, perfect. Moving right along, folks. Number nine. One day, Isabella would love to travel to now, again, this is an image prompt, but we have to wait to see a picture of Isabella and the flag she's carrying before we can answer. Is it going to be l'Australie, les États-Unis, Washington, Floride, ou Paris? So again, I gave a little bit more time for that question. But the image reveal feature is, I, I find it very, very powerful and uh, something that you'll certainly want to check out. All right, so I'm just going to skip ahead there if I may. Excellent. So it is La Tour Eiffel à Paris. And again, just to confirm that, c'est le drapeau français, n'est-ce pas? All right, moving right along. Combo breaker. I never saw Escuchem, mis amigo. Which of the following is not mentioned in the video? Now, this time, okay, I'm going to let you look at those briefly. I'm going to go full screen. I'm going to turn up my mic and hope this works. And see what happens here. Okay, good. So again, we're looking for which of the four was not mentioned in the video. And my Spanish is not good enough to uh, 
repeat them all. Ba, what's that? Babuha, El Gato, La Chaucerie. <laughs> so again, you get the idea. Students need to listen carefully and watch that video prompt in order to answer the question. All right, so we have a number of people on streaks here. That's great. One more informational slide. I, I consider this one to be a game changer because in distance education in Newfoundland and Labrador, because I rely so much on having students do uh, short video clips using Adobe Spark or uh, Screencastify or Loom, um, I've tried this whereby I get them to upload their video to YouTube and then ask a question based on the video. So we're gonna give this a try. All right, this is number 12. And this is going to be double your points. So you're going to see the closed captioning of Paxton's video, which may or may not help. Hope. Let's see what happens. Sorry, don't tell Paxton. Oh, so sorry. David, I'll say bye. Wow. Mel C. Paxton. So there you go. So Paxton made up her, her video in TikTok, uploaded it to YouTube, okay, and then I made a question based on the information. So it was, elle adore le basketball, and if we were going to go back through again, you could see her hitting the uh, three-pointer. All right, excellent. Oh, Guo has made a Guo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not. Open ended question. This Canadian artist has produced songs in English and French. He is Bieber, AKA Biebs. So now you're going to type in your answer on your device. And you can see the image reveal feature there again. Okay, I'm not going to leave it up for the full 30, 60 seconds, sorry. Yeah, I mean, you may or may not know this guy <laughs> for the right or wrong reasons, I'm not sure. But let's go ahead and see what we get here. All right, so the answer to that would have been Justin. So notice that I, I, I accepted J, uh, Justin with a capital J as well as a lowercase j. All right, so Justin Bieber, 32 people got that one correct. Good stuff. Any changes? Uh, a little bit. Number 14, here's our Ed puzzle. Watch carefully. What is Mr. Bean's problem? This is in English, of course. I'll just. Of course, I love Mr. Bean because there's so little dialogue. A reminder that you have to press on the K. Once you've got your sentence in the correct order, you have to click on the K in order for that to work. All right, so you get the idea there. So as he was trying to get ready for his next trip, which is probably no time soon, what do we notice about the suitcase? I think we have 41, 42. I think 44 is the magic number there. All right. Okay, so Mr. Bean's suitcase is way too small. Exactly. Okay, good. All right. Um, so that about concludes the game. Oh, we have another puzzle game. Identify. Oh, this is kind of neat. 
Identify the appropriate variants of fair for each sentence. So, number one on the far left, which uh, tense is that in? So you have to look at the four sentences and identify the tenses in each one of them, put them in order, you know, depending on what number they are. So they, we're going from left to right. So a little bit of a higher level uh, learning activity here. So the students are identifying the tenses, of course, and then putting them in the correct order on the bottom. Okay, so je fais le présent, nous allons faire le futur proche. J'ai fait, passé composé, et je faisais. All right, so let's see how many people got that one right. Excellent, 88%. All right, so that's the order right there. So again, you could go back and discuss, je fais, nous allons faire. You know, your teaching will depend on how many students got that right, all right? All right, and one last one, just for fun. Watch carefully and rearrange the sentence parts of this one. That one's got 1.8 million views or something or other. So in this case, where did we find the maple bacon in this case? All right, we're good. All right, the maple bacon was in the meat drawer. Okay, so now we look at the podium to see how people did look. Perfect score there, Madame M, felicitations. Excellent. So you can see that everyone did very well. We all. Bravo, felicitations. All right, we have the runners up here. So again, I can get feedback here now if I want. I can view the report, I can save the results, play again, so on and so forth. All right, so I'm gonna stop that there now. Oh, did I just shut that out? I did too. Goodness, sorry about that, folks. All right. Any burning questions on that, Joe, before I move on? And my apologies for going so long with that. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think it's all good. I think we're, we're, um, we're discovering our competitive side and we're, we're raring to go on to the next activity. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, good. All right. All right, so that was Kahoot in a nutshell. So as we move on, um, da -da -da, we got two ways to join. Uh, just a couple more features about Kahoot that I want to remind you of. Uh, one is that the, the timer now goes up to four minutes. Okay, so you can really have some higher learning activities as prompts. Okay, um, and the video reminder, that's kind of neat because you can take any video and crop it down. Right, so we want something that's going to be, you know, at the student's level, fairly challenging, but easy to understand, set them up for success, all right? So the next two slides, and again, I'll share this with you, uh, a lot of these are from the UK, are just uh, links that I have found to be somewhat useful in searching for videos to play with my students, okay? Even the old shamey me, I mean, we're going back on that one, aren't we? But uh, Mary Glasgow, love that one. So there's, there's lots, of, uh, lots of ideas there. And again, you can assign challenges. I showed you how to do that early on, right? So your focus, guys, is to jump into all these different features now. Sign, you know, get the premium account, make sure that you get access to the premium accounts, and then you can start using all these wonderful features. All right, now, Quizlet Live, we're gonna try an individual game. Um, 
And and I noticed, Joe, that I was I won't say disappointed, but I was I was surprised to see that um, uh, there was very little difference between a team game and an individual game. Uh, what I did learn is that um, you have to have a minimum of two people, right? So uh, basically, many of you are familiar with Quizlet, so you're going to go to your live. Again, I won't give you time to look at the, uh, the vocab words, not enough time. I'm going to go to create game, individuals. All right, we'll prompt you with the French, and you have to uh, choose the English. All right, so I'll get you to log in to Quizlet Live. Okay, so you're gonna type in that there and there is your code that you're gonna put in. Okay, I'll give you about a minute to do that, guys. Just to give you a quick demo of how it works. So rather than putting you in teams, you're playing in an individual mode. Uh, and perhaps, uh, Joe, maybe you can speak to this. It may be possible to send out the link to students to play on their own, but um, unlike the Kahoot Challenge, I couldn't find that. I think what some people are doing is they're sharing the code via Google Classroom oh, or such like, exactly. show my homework, et cetera. And then the students can then play uh, asynchronously. Okay, gotcha. All right, thank you. Okay, so we've got 34 in there now. So we'll just uh, we'll do a we'll just start one up to see how it how it looks. Um, so you can join in the Quizlet app as well, right? If you've got that on your phone. All right, so I think there's almost. So wait another couple seconds, and we're all in there, just to give you an idea of how this is going to look. All right, and I did have a picture there. So what you're gonna see, and I get the funny feeling that most of you are familiar with Kahoot, quite familiar with it, um, the individual game mode, okay? So you, you create, create the game like you would, and then you give the code, right? And then off you go. Back to Quizlet Live. Okay, so we'll just give you, uh, here we go. So we have all the, the names en français, ce qui est fantastique. Oh, and we're going to start the game. So we'll give you one minute, guys, just to work through that and see how people do. Remember that if you get one wrong, unfortunately, you go back to the beginning, which is too bad. Oh, you guys are quite good. La plupart de vous, vous êtes des profs de français. Okay, so that gives you a general idea of how that's going to work there. And we have a winner. We oui. Félicitations à Vic. Vic qui a gagné. Okay, so we have le lapin de pack, what we know. There was very little confusion there. All right, so that is Quizlet Live in a nutshell. Okay, and that's the individual mode. All right, so that's something that you may want to explore as well. Uh, looking at my time here, yeah, so that's what I meant to show you prior to. All right, so you're, you're prompted with uh, the French word and you choose what is correct on on gay. Uh, there is a free upgrade with Quizlet, so you want to certainly check that out. And I believe much like Kahoot, they're free until the end of the school year. Okay, moving right on now, we're going to go hit on uh, GimKit. And this is Josh who did a quick video. It's only two minutes, so I'm going to play it for you. This is Josh here from GimKit. And I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to learn about GimKit today. Uh, GimKit is amazing, and I'm sure she'll show you everything that you need to know. We'll be able to see the photos and tell you about it. It's a big step to the next time. 
I think we're having an issue with the sound, um, Glenn, but I think it's probably just because we're playing it through Zoom. But if you were playing this in class, it, you, it would be fine. I think it's just because we're playing it through uh, it would. Zoom. Yeah. Can I just say, it is because we're, you didn't click on the share computer sound. So it really is possible to, if you just unshare and then I'm share so again, but this time press computer sound, and then it'll work. Because I think that was, that was obviously a really good bit for us to see. And we can always edit this video afterwards, if, that, if that's okay. So if I go new share, or if you just unshare that, unshare that, and then share it again. But this time on the left-hand side, it'll say, or at least on mine, it says share computer sound. I don't know why I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing anything about the computer sound, which is odd. On mine, when you click share, all right. Okay, I'll try, I'll, I'll play that again and see if that makes a difference. I, I don't know if it will. If you didn't know, if you didn't have the, the option to share. Are, are you hearing that better now? No, no, it ha it's not sharing the computer sound. Oh, I'm so sorry. I can't see. But what I'm going to do, I'm just, I'm just going to pause. Okay, let's try it now. Hey, New Brunswick. This is Josh here from GimKit. And I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to learn about GimKit today. Is that working now? Yes, all good. Yes, perfect. Hey, uh, Glenn Cake is amazing, and I'm sure she'll show you everything that you need to know. And I'm really excited for you all to, to learn about it. And uh, thanks for thanks to Glenn for sharing it. So GimKit started off as a high school project. I in, in high school and in middle school, I played a lot of games in class that really helped me get engaged in games like Kahoot and Quizlet Live. And I was trying to become a better engineer. And so I decided to start working on a project that kind of would help me become a better engineer. And when I thought about what I wanted to build, I wanted to build something that I would actually want to use. And so I went ahead and built a classroom quiz game. Uh, I did this because of my school. Uh, the high school I went to is a project-based uh, learning high school. So we worked on projects completely as our schoolwork, and that gave me the opportunity to work on something like this. And it, it started off just wanting for me to become a better engineer, and I never expected it to grow to, to what it is today. I just graduated from high school in June, and I work on GimKit now with three other people, and it's amazing because we get to build a bunch of awesome and exciting things for students and, ed and educators. So I hope you enjoy GimKit, and uh, let me know if you need anything, and thanks again, Glenn. Again, my apologies about that, folks. All right, hold it's all good, Glenn. It's all good. Okay, good. Excellent. Okay, so that's Josh. Now, this video, I think it's probably a year old now. Just amazing. Um, we're not going to do a traditional Gim Kit game today. Uh, we're going to jump right into a Kit Collab, as was suggested. Um, but what I do want to tell you is with a free Gim Kit account, again, you can search for other activities, other games, and you can make duplicates or copies of that and then tweak as you see fit. So now you have, typically it's five games. With the COVID crisis, it's now up to 10 games, okay? Um, another feature is uh, the auto accept. So strongly recommend that if you're going to give this a go, um, you would. Sorry, you would um, create classes because that way, when you play a game kit, then the students don't have to worry about typing their name in. They're all part of a class, and it will even keep record of how each and every student did in all of the game kits you play. So it's a very powerful feature. All right, so we're gonna jump into Kit Collab. And I'm gonna try and bring this up for you. There we go. All right, now, okay, we're attempting to reconnect. Just give me a second here. All right, so we're gonna do a Kit Collab, and a Kit Collab is a little bit different because 
it uh, gives you the opportunity to make up questions. So as a teacher, okay, I'm looking down through here. Uh, I'm just gonna go with one question. Um, I'm gonna give you $20 to start because I'm a nice guy. You can't go less than minus 50. Music, there's all kinds of power-ups and, and it's just a really powerful program. Um, so what's gonna happen now? I'm gonna ask each and every one of you to go to gamekit.com slash play, put in that code, and then you're going to make up a question about whatever language it is that you teach, make up a multiple choice question uh, based on that language, okay? Just for fun. So I'm just trying to give you an idea of how this works, All right? So I see a lot of people are in. So as you start typing in your questions, they'll come up on the right-hand side here for me to see. So again, so I can kind of give them the all clear or I can say, no, that one's not right. We're gonna to have to go back to the drawing board and try it again. All right, so I'll give you a minute or so to do that and then we'll jump into a game. Uh, and for those of you who have never played GimKit before, I'm just gonna add these guys. Um, there's a whole strategy uh, to winning uh, and that being um, you get you can go to a shop and you can buy insurance, you can buy money streak bonus, um, you can buy the multiplier, right? So there's all kinds of fun things there. All right, so I can see the people in green now have put in their questions. This is great, people. Keep it going. What? All right, so I'll try to get a few more questions in there. Now, as you notice, when I set it up in the beginning, I only set it up for two minutes because I'm afraid that we're gonna run out of time. <laughs> My apologies, Joe and Helen, uh, but we'll see what happens. Now, the beauty about this game that we're gonna try right now is that I've been in contact with Josh and he is going to give out a free three-month membership to the winner of this particular game today. All right, so there's a three month membership on the line. Uh, and I'm going to start it. So you're gonna have two minutes. If you wanna go uh, to the shop to buy some of the features, you can do so, but you're not gonna have a whole lot of money to do so. Again, we don't have a lot of time here today. So we're just trying to give you the idea. And I'm going to start the game. I'm, I'm hoping that the people in red are going to be able to jump into the game. All right, let's give it a go. Como se llama? Good. All right. Okay, I'll just... <laughs> we need more time. We need a part two. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to start the game. Here we go. We're off. Two minutes.
seconds. top left you see you get a prompt now to clap see if we can get up to 100 claps we can play again which we don't have time to do but we can view a report and this is a really powerful report that they spit up so not that I want to show how individual people did but overall we can look at the accuracy how many questions were taken we can even look at the questions to see where the problem areas were and that we might have to go back and revisit, for example, how we say Easter in Spanish. Nespa. Okay, so that is that. All right, so that was our tilt game. All right, so again, uh, Mr. Trump, you will get in contact with me. I'll give you my email at the end and you get your uh, three month free subscription. Um, Joe, I don't know. What do you think? Do we have time for the word wall? I think I think so. I think lots of people have not heard of word wall before. Obviously, if people want to leave early. That's fine. But I think um, it would be lovely to look at it. If that's okay. Excellent. Yeah, I've got time. No problem. So um, again, out of the UK, bravo to you people. Um, the gentleman who came up with this, um, I forget his name. Now he did email me earlier today. Um, very very powerful uh, program. There he is there. Um, I'm not gonna play the video, but you can look at it. His name is Josh, uh, once, once you have a look. Um, it's got so many options. First of all, there's already 100,000 resources pre-made by teachers of various languages put up for you to look at. Again, you can make a copy, duplicate to your own account. 40 different templates of games, it could be a quiz show, it could be a balloon drop, it could be uh, the old Pac-Man uh, game, it's amazing. Uh, so you can go interactive or have printed worksheets, uh, various game formats, and you can set assignments or play live. Uh, you can also embed these games on the website. So we're gonna try a game live, of course, because that's the way we roll. Now, if I'm going to find that game, is that the one I want to know? One second now. Just have to see my screen. This should be the one right here. I created one on, yeah, Les Adjectifs Description d'une Personne. So actually, this one I found, I made a copy into my account, and then I made some tweaks, okay? So again, we could play it in any one of these formats here interactively, print it off. Very, very powerful. So um, in order to play a multiplayer game, like we're going to do live, you have to do a quiz game, okay? So we're gonna try the quiz game here today. So you're gonna go to gowordwall.com and you've got your code there. So we'll give you a minute to do that and then we'll get started. And is this completely free, Glenn, or is it just, are you showing us free and premium features, or is it completely free? Completely free, Joe. Completely awesome. free. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Now, you, you only get up to five games, but I mean, you know, you could always remove or, you know, do what you got to do. Uh, I think when he responded today, I, I asked if there would be a, a prize, and uh, he, he didn't, I'm not sure if I asked that or he said, <laughs> no free whatsoever, which is fair enough. So again, this is, the, I've never tried this before. This is the first time I've tried the live with word wall. But I tell you, if it's anything like that they got there, you're absolutely going to. So in this particular activity, 
I think you, you, you look at a picture and you have to come up with the appropriate, uh, much like who you choose the appropriate um, with that. All right, and I think our magic number is around 44. But we've got 41. Oh, hey, oh, we got 42. Let's give it a go. So, play, you should see the leaderboard up here. Okay, I'm pretty sure that you're going to see the leaderboard. And three, two, one. Okay. for everyone to answer on to the next question. And I'm pretty sure it will give me the scoreboard then or tell me how many people was what there. All right. So we've So this one is obviously based on time. Okay, we'll do a few more up here. So regardez bien ces yeux, mes Now it may be a question of, of timing, um, you know, how fast these questions It will tell me who scored what. Les yeux verts, pardon. Les yeux verts. Okay. And we'll do one more. So again, we can see how many people chose the correct answer. All right. And All right. So I'm going to stop that one right there now. Um, certainly, you'll want to give that a go and check that out. Uh, and I, I'm not going to have time for the whiteboard.fi. I don't know, Joe, if you might want to. Well, maybe maybe five minutes, just quickly. I'm yeah. sure if, if people are happy to stay on. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, if they have to leave, that's right. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah. Okay, so everyone is going to take this address, which I will copy and put into the chat. If I can. I can never seem to find the chat when I need it. <laughs> uh. At the top of the screen, I think it'll say uh, chat. It's just, I don't know where it goes. It doesn't. Uh. <laughs> well, we can see it on our screen anyway. In, in the um, previous. You, again, yeah. it's, it's because you're presenting. You have to hover where you've got share screen yeah. and then they come uh, down there. And sometimes it's under more. You've actually got to click on more. It's not very I good. Found it and it says Alt H and I'm clicking on it, but nothing is it's not popping up on either screen unless it's in the background. Maybe there already it unclipped, um, popped it out, put it somewhere. There, yeah. <laughs> yes, there it is. <laughs> of that. All right, so we'll get that back there. Yeah. Okay, so on my end now, I'm going to actually, uh oh, I'm going to put it in myself. Oh, goodness. Why is that not working? T83, uh, was that the correct one? Mm -hmm. Yep. So if I put in T83, but I was supposed to be the host. I'm sorry, guys. Do you want to just create a new one quickly and put it? Yeah, in so that's what you've got to do. So you got to join a class, I guess, um, create a new class. Sorry. 
And, and Joe, just talk about a couple of ways that you can see this being used. Um, by... Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah. I, um, essentially, it's the, it's similar to um, having mini whiteboards in the classroom. So you basically you create the board, and then everyone can then draw on their own board. They, my understanding is they only get to see their own board, whereas the teacher gets to see all the boards. Exactly. So in a remote learning context, you could ask them to draw a picture. They could all draw their own individual pictures, and then you could then um, either ask them um, over the microphone or ask them to write in the text chat. Um, each each person in the text chat could um, describe what the picture is. A bit like Sha La La as well, which I haven't shown everyone yet, but I've shown in other webinars. Um, so and it's completely free as well, and um, the students don't need to log in, and the teacher doesn't need to log in either. I don't think, if I remember correctly. So I've only just heard about this in the last couple of days, but. Um, it was um, Alice Keeler uh, from the States who mentioned it first and um, excited to see how we can use it. Yeah, so I guess yeah. I'll give a prompt here on the main one saying, you know, on your whiteboard now, I want you to depict your favorite language game. And then when I look at my class, I'm gonna see everyone's answers coming in here, right? Um, I, I did try this with a student that I'm tutoring uh, earlier this week, and uh, she didn't like the fact that you couldn't save the screens. Now, I don't know if there's a way around that or not, um, but, um, you know, I guess once you move on to the next question, then uh, these are not, you're not allowed, you're not able to save these screens here. No, I don't think you can with this one, but you can with Sha La La. You can download the PDF as the teacher. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, good. All right, so we see GimKit, Quizlet Live. Yeah, so we've got a lot of text debate. Nice. Okay, so you get, again, guys, you get the idea. Is that enough of that, Joe? Or Yeah, no, that's, I think that's great. I think that makes the point. That's great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so again, I'm going to share this presentation with you. Um, I did have some others that honorable mention, but of course we don't have enough time to look at them today. Uh, quizzes is fantastic. Uh, quizzes have got some new features. Um, you can create your own mimes or memes, however you pronounce that. Um, there, and you can add audio prompts for questions. Um, Edpuzzle, uh, the speaking and practice app. I just saw that online the other day. It might be something you want to check out. Quick Draw by Google. You can play that in any language. That's always a bit of fun. Uh, and Quizalize. All right. So I just wanted to mention those. And, uh, you know, guys, just a, a quick quote that was shared with me by a student of mine. I always give a sondage at the end of the year. And, you know, playing these games really hits home with, with my distance education students. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just happy to learn more and share with you and I think it's fantastic. So it's over. That's well done, Glenn. You've done a great job. There are some lovely comments in the chat. I think everyone's really enjoyed um, the way that Excellent. we've all taken part interactively. Um, it, it just shows, I, well, I, I'm sure everyone feels now that they will be able to try these uh, tools out if they haven't done already um, in a synchronous way uh, in, uh, in, the, in a remote classroom. And um, a lot of them you wouldn't actually need to um, have video conferencing, uh, having having the videos on, you could use these without having that video conference on and just having the uh, the activities running at the same time. I, I was having a really fascinating Twitter chat with quite a few people this afternoon about uh, if if from a safeguarding point of view, you're not allowed to have videos on, how what sort of interactive activities you can do. And I think you've given lot given us lots of food for thought on Excellent. the sorts of activities that you could use um, remotely. Uh, by you know uh, creating uh, quiz uh, uh, by creating the assignments with Kahoot uh, uh, to, uh, challenges Quizlet assignments etc. You've given us lots of and the Kit Collab uh, feature. Um, I know I asked you to do that, but I didn't realise that's exactly how it worked. I thought it was great the way that you can uh, get the students to create their own questions. Really empowering and uh, great for promoting independent language learning. So Absolutely. yeah, some lovely comments in the chat there. Great stuff. So. <laughs> Um, so for us to go to find more, is it the bit.ly link you've got there on the yes, slide? So that link I've got right here. If I click on that and open it up for you, um, oh yeah, probably go to the home page. You can also contact me if you want, if you got any questions. Uh, Trump has to contact me. Uh, I need an email from uh, that person. Mm -hmm. uh, 
him or her. <laughs> and, and, on, and on Twitter, you're G Cakey, aren't you? You're not Glenn Cake on Twitter. You're G Cakey, C-A-K-E-Y. That's right, yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. So I've tried on my Google sites. I should have mentioned, Joe, I'm off this year. I did a year of deferred salary. So uh, it's been wonderful to be off and, and spend a little bit more time doing some uh, conferencing and consulting, although now is not the case. Uh, so I've been spending more time on wrapping up my uh, website, so on and so forth. So please feel free to, uh, to contact me and uh, I look forward to collaboration with you folks again. Awesome stuff, Glenn. Thank you ever so much. What a great way to spend this after the evening playing interactive games, practicing on language learning. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure everyone should turn their mics on now or their videos on now and give uh, Glenn a lovely round of applause. That was really great stuff. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Hopefully you got uh, something out of it. And uh, again, feel free to touch base if you have any questions or I can help you all. That's fantastic. Lovely. Great. Um, Helen, were there any, a few final words you want to say? Well, really, just to add to what you said, Joe, that's fantastic. Glenn, that's the first time we've met. I know that uh, Glenn, um, Joe has introduced us, but we, we need you again, definitely. There's so much <laughs> more that you can give to us as well. And you presented it so well, and it just does make it even more to know what you've been doing for real, for a long time, for real needs there as well. So... Those, those first few slides about seeing how isolated some of those places were. So thank you ever so much, really good. And Thanks. it'd be nice if everybody could show their videos now so that we can take a nice screenshot of everybody here. <laughs> that would be really, you know, we can then add that to the, um, add that to the, the website. Because I, kind of, I keep forgetting to do that. So there we are. So I don't know if, uh, <laughs> lovely, is Tina there? Jacqueline, do you fancy showing your faces? So then I'll take this screen and then I think I go to another one. I'll take another one. So um, if I do print screen. Oh, actually, first of all, no, it will do this. Print screen. Okay. It goes Everyone print the smile. Yeah, the hair. Hair. Everyone hair the hair. first of all. <laughs> okay. So I'll, do, I'll do three in case people look, something happens to you. So one, <laughs> okay, here we go. Three, smile. <laughs> there you are. I'm just doing the screenshot of that. It's <laughs> one. There, over there. And again. Right. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do a third one. Why not? And here goes. Oh, no. I've got to go to the next screen as well, because that's only oh, one of two. That's true. I was going to miss out the other people. So at the moment, I don't know with Ruth, Lily, are you, are you there? So again, one, two, three, smile. Lovely. Lovely. And just one, another one of that. Uh, second, <laughs> sorry, the second row. <laughs> one, two, three, smile. <laughs> Lovely. Right. That's really good. What a nice way of spending a Saturday. Okay, I'll stop recording now. Oh, and thank you so much, Joe. I mean, really, I always say thank you to Joe for knowing all these people. Well. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And so the next Tilt webinar is coming up yes. on Tuesday. And it's with Jan Charma from um, Queensland, Australia. So it's 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, UK time, uh, BST. And... Um, Jan, I've, I've known Jan, like Glenn, for many years online. I've, met, I've had the pleasure of meeting Jan um, at a, a, well, a couple of times, no, I think what, just the one time, actually, in a, in a conference in Australia. And she's a big fan of a tool called Class Kick, which I don't, don't, don't think that many people have heard about. And Class Kick, I think, could, again, be very useful in a remote learning context. So I've asked um, uh, Jan to come on and to demonstrate it and then, and then get us to all to take part live in, uh, in the session as well, which I'm sure you'll all find really fantastic. So if you haven't heard of Class Kick before, come along at, uh, come along at 10 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday for that. And then on Thursday, we have the lovely Esmeralda Salgado uh, from King's Ely. And she's going to be talking about all the different things that she does using technology for an hour. So that'll be fabulous as well. Uh, yeah, so there we are. And then on, and just one on, other yeah. thing as well, because we didn't quite get through everything with Jane Basnett uh, last week, we've got mm. one, a special, an extra one on Monday. Of course. So Monday, um, between eight o'clock and nine o'clock, we'll just be finishing, well, I say finishing it off. It's going to be an hour's worth, I'm sure, of all of the little extra things that people wanted to know about using Microsoft Teams, so especially for people using Microsoft Teams, using um, Stream, Whiteboard, that sort of thing. 
Okay. And, and a week today, we have Kerry and Wen James as well, who's going to be doing some more interactive activities. Um, so <laughs> next week, we've got what, four? Is that four? Four webinars. So um, over the Easter holidays, we thought it would be a good I idea for those people who wanted to get their teeth into getting ahead and to uh, learn f um, some, for some free CPD. We thought that's why we, you know, we're not, it's not going to be four every week from now on, but for next week, it's going to be four webinars, completely free webinars for you to enjoy and to learn. So um, you're very, very welcome. Then as well. I'm just of course. Vincent. Of course. Vincent's coming up soon. Yep. One. We've got Jenny as well. So, and Judith, lots more coming up. Okay. Well, thank you, Helen and Joe, for the opportunity. You guys are doing a great service here for teachers in the UK and throughout. And uh, hats off to you guys. Chapeau. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, oh, Len. Thank you. So a big round of applause to everybody. Hey. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Thanks, Thanks all.